As a television broadcast engineer, it is often the case you are throwing a curveball, not only in your designs, but out in the field. And that's going to be the center case of today's Let's Build video. Hey everyone, this is Ryan Corcoran, Broadcast Buddy TV, the all-around go-to channel for all things broadcast television. And on this channel, it is our goal to equip you with the tips, tricks, and know-hows to help make you a better broadcaster. So if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hit that bell icon so you never miss an upload. With that being said, let's get started. So today's Let's Build video is going to be not all that different from the very first one I did, which was the shader in a box. This one, although will not be a shader in a box, will hopefully be a quality of life improvement to the shader position in my other production unit. So in order to understand where I'm going with this, I need to kind of give you a little bit of a background on the whole reason this is even a necessity or why this is even a problem. So long story short, when we had upgraded the cameras from production unit A from the JVC HM890s to the Hitachi SK HD 1800 uh, camera chain, we had gotten the 1300 CUs for the CCU portion. I was told at the time of purchasing that they would have a web GUI that we would be able to remote into and adjust the settings on the CCU. Didn't seem so unreasonable, right? Web GUIs are very common these days. Well, turns out that that isn't actually the case and there's really no plans for it to be the case. So uh, in my initial design of how I was going to lay this all out in my racks, didn't really accommodate for the other method of changing the settings in the CCU, which is the PIX output or PIX of the unit itself. So even though the PIX output is essentially a carbon copy of the other HD SDI outputs of the camera, um, the only difference is that it has the ability to superimpose the menu over top of that output. And uh, it's not uncommon that people will take that output from the CCU and run it straight into their video switcher or their router or whichever. However, the problem with that is that there's always the inherent risk that you could be live on that camera and the menu could be brought up on air. I've actually have seen this happen in a number of places that I have been working and it's never a fun and you don't want to end up on the uh, television production fail Facebook group for that. Trust me. So the other method is that you just bring out those PIX outputs in little pigtails and you can connect a monitor at the time you need to adjust the menu settings, which inherently is what I'm currently doing right now. So the downside of that is, well, if you need to make an adjustment on the fly, then you gotta get your test monitor out and hook it up and look at it from there. Uh, another method would be to essentially just get a switch that you could put all the inputs in and have a single output going to a monitor and switch it from there. That would work, but I'm also dealing with a very small amount of rack space. So essentially, and I'll put it up on screen now, I have this amount of area and I need two RU of available space. So looking around the internet, I found what I thought was the perfect solution. TV Logic makes this two RU five LCD HD SDI in monitor that would have fit perfectly in the space I needed and did everything I needed. I could see all five cameras at once, which would be good for the shader so they can look between and compare cameras and they would have their own isolated uh, preview to see those PIX output menu screens. I thought it was great. So what did I do? I ordered them and waited patiently only for the manufacturer to tell me that, well, sorry, we don't actually make this anymore. So there was another similar unit that I found. Um, I'll put that up on screen right now. I can't remember the model number of it uh, or the manufacturer for that matter but it was also five monitors, HD SDI inputs, but it was one and a half RU. And it just, I don't know, something about it seemed a little clunky. And at that point it's like, 
the screens are getting so small, which it's already small to begin with, and now you're gonna be squinting really hard to see those pix output menus, so I decided not to do that. So with all of that, it kind of left me scratching my head thinking, what am I gonna do for this type of solution? And I think I came up with something pretty clever leveraging Nutec's NDI protocol and Ross Video's UltraTouch. So let's go take a look at that. Welcome to this part of my office. This will be the first whiteboarding session I've ever done in any of my videos, so make sure to let me know in the comments below if you liked it and if I should do more of it. So let's first talk about this concept, starting with NDI. What is NDI? Well, NDI stands for Network Device Interface, and it's Nutex protocol, which actually allows for high quality video and audio to be transported at low latency over a gigabit network. So this is going to be crucial to this whole concept. Now, essentially what I wanna do is I wanna take my CCUs, HD, STI output, and get it to my ultra touch. So what is an ultra touch? Well, this, this is an ultra touch. Pretty boring when it's turned off. Uh, so what an ultra touch is, is Ross Video's 2RU touch screen control panel, which, uh, which its sole purpose is to essentially boot and run dashboard, which is Ross Video's control software. Uh, by the way, this video isn't sponsored by either vendor, but uh, what I want to be able to do is build my own custom panel on dashboard that's gonna run on the ultra touch in this form factor. Now what's really cool about dashboard, known or not known, is that you can make your own custom panels and it can take in NDI streams. So once a video output is in NDI, we can pull it up as a video window in our custom dashboard. So how do we make this work? Well, we know we're gonna need a switch, right? Because of our NDI protocol functioning on a gigabit network. So we'll have a switch with several ports, which we already have one in the production unit. And then we're going to need a way to convert this HDSDI video feed into NDI. And for that, I have found this solution. This is actually a bird dog quad 4K or 4K quad, and it has four 12G SDI inputs slash outputs. Uh, and its sole purpose is to convert these baseband video inputs to NDI or take NDI and convert them to baseband video outputs. So it's basically a four converter in one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that bird dog converter and it is going to take that network out into our network switch. And it's going to eat up one of those 12G inputs. So from there, it becomes very easy because now since this is on the network, we can just pull this straight off into our ultra touch, which has a network input as well. And this is really it. This is the complexity of it. Now, of course, we have multiple CCUs, a total of five, which does inherently present one issue, is that this only has four inputs, four, four CCUs. So we will need a second one of these bird dog converters and we'll run that into this one, which will then inherently go into another 
port on the network switch. And it won't be wasted either because I'm sure I will be able to find additional uses for these in the future. Let's say I want to uh, stream a program feed to another dashboard panel somewhere else. Maybe I want to make a custom dashboard panel for the booth in the, uh, for the talent. So they can see not only program, but maybe some of the cameras as well, or you know maybe a replay look, uh, something like that. And then we could incorporate score data on that. So there's a lot of possibilities. So I definitely will find a use for those additional three. So at that point, this is it. This is what's gonna happen behind the scenes. We're gonna take those PIX outputs of the CCUs, run them into the bird dog converters, get them on the network in an NDI stream, and then set up our custom panel to subscribe to those independent NDI streams. And then ultimately, we will build a custom dashboard panel. This is the front of my ultra touch that will have those cameras. My spacing is terrible, but camera one, two, three, etc. And then maybe, I don't know yet, but maybe we'll have controls or tallies or some way that we can, I have some ideas. So, but this, I wanted to get you kind of the concept of where we're going with this. So let's start putting stuff together and making sure it's all gonna do what I want it to do. Okay, so here we are and we're going to take all of the equipment, we're gonna set it up, we're gonna do a dry run, uh, effectively just to prove the concept, right? Um, I did go ahead and configure all of the device's IP addresses off screen just because that's cumbersome and nobody really cares to see that. So here we go, let's put it together. All right, so at this point we got the network switch and we got the ultra touch powered on and booting up. Um, plugged into the network switch. Nothing really uh, else to say about that. Um, next thing is I'm going to get the bird dog and get that hooked up as well as a test monitor so we can see some color bars. All right, so now we got the bird dog plugged into the network switch and powered and we got it booting up. So I got my test monitor here, so we're gonna power this up and then we are going to get some actual video going to this. Okay, so now all the pieces are essentially in place. In the network switch, we have the ultra touch. We have my computer behind us because I'm gonna to need to uh, have that plugged in to push custom panels to the Altrix, Altrix, to the Ultra Touch. Uh, we have the bird dog plugged in as well. So that should be three total. We have the bird dog here, which has the HDSDI coming out of my test monitor color bars and going into the first input. And we have it powered. We have the Ultra Touch powered. This is powered my test monitor, and the switch is powered. So that should be everything we need. Like I said, all the IP addresses are set on the Ultra Touch and the Bird Dog already. No point in doing that. Uh, cumbersome. So now the only thing I need to do is I need to build a custom panel to test this. So um, I'm not gonna go into detail just yet on that. I just wanna make sure it works. Then if everything goes well, then we'll go to the next step and we'll actually build the panel that we're going to have loaded on this Ultra Touch. So stand by. And there we go. It looks like it's working. So this is sending out the video. It's getting encoded into NDI and we are receiving it on our NDI plugin on our custom dashboard panel. 
So in theory, if I pull this away, we're going to lose that connection. And if I put it back in, we go, we're gonna get it back. Perfect. So this is gonna work. Uh, the next step is just going to be to uh, essentially take the bird dogs and attach them to the picks out of the CCUs and then build a custom panel to house those video inputs and we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and start building that panel. So one other thing I wanted to uh, quick show you guys was I just got done mounting the bird dogs to a 1RU shelf. So this is what's going to go on the rack. And ugh, get close here. As you can see, I have them labeled with their respective IP addresses. And uh, these things can actually be powered by PoE, power over ethernet, which uh, our switch in the truck will actually support. So I shouldn't need to run additional power to these, which will be nice because, you know, power is sometimes a commodity in these types of situations. So I'm going to go, I'm going to install these in the rack real quick. I'm going to get them wired up and then we're going to go and build that panel. Okay, so now that everything's racked up, we can uh, get to the configuration side of this as well as the uh, building of the actual panel. So the first thing I wanted to show you, I know I kind of breezed through it off camera, but the bird dog does actually have its own interface. And uh, this is the IP address that I signed. The default out of the box, I think is like 192, 168, 100.100. So again, kind of tedious to go and get everything said and talking to the same thing. So I didn't really want to bother showing that. But once it is configured and it's here, you can go into the web GUI. What I wish the cameras had, whole reason we're doing this, is uh, we can now type in the password and default out of the box is bird dog. And when we get into this, assuming that I type it incorrectly, There we go. It'll bring up the default page, information about its IP address. But this is essentially where I went in. I changed it from default DHCP to uh, static, gave it my IP address that I wanted, subnet mask. And then the only other thing I had to do to get it to talk to dashboard or for dashboard to see the stream was under system, the NDI network settings out of the box, this was set to just TCP. So I had to make it multicast TCP in order for a dashboard to see it and then apply the settings. Then in the AV setup per stream, right? We said this has four inputs. The only other thing I did was I went in and I renamed the stream from stream one, stream two to cam one, cam two, etc., And then just left the video input format to auto. Now, if I find that this is like bogging down the network in a fierce way, there's really no reason this has to be super great quality. So we can always pull down the NDI output bandwidth. Um, so it's not as high quality, but even less bandwidth and in turn less latency. So there's always that option. But anyway, just thought I'd show you that. So this is the first one. And uh, if I just wanted to, I could go into .34 which is the second one. So that's here as well. Now, NDI is, like we said, from NewTek. And if you go to NewTek's website, you can actually download a set of tools for working with NDI. One that's really useful is gonna be the studio monitor. So if I open this up, it essentially makes a little window that will pull and see any NDI streams that are currently out there and you can go between them. So here I, here I have my bird dog A, bird dog B, and then the available streams. So this is always good, especially if you want to test before getting into like dashboard to see if it's at least making it to what uh, new tech would natively find that stream as. Okay, so now into the dashboard side of this. So I'm going to open up Ross Video's dashboard and I'm not gonna go over too much of the fundamentals of panel building. I kind of touched base on that on one of my other videos where we uh, uh, built a custom dashboard panel to put 
VU meters on a uh, multi-viewer for a graphite or uh, ultra. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and make a new custom panel. So I'm going to go File, New, Custom Panel File. And I am going to call this Hermes One Video Panel. Hermes One being the name of the production unit. Now, normally what I would do is I would just do a uh, blank self-contained data source, but you will notice that there is a special option here for Ultra Touch 2 Panel, 2RU, which is what we have. So I'm going to put this in a location, maybe under my documents. I'll make a new folder and I'm going to call this probably the same thing. Okay, good enough. And I'm going to hit OK and finish. Now, what you're going to notice is the actual editable area is highlighted for us here. And this is going to represent the window of the Ultra Touch. So I'm going to kick it into panel edit mode, control G, and we're going to get started here. So, uh, Easiest way to make uniform things is going to be to make some sort of a simple grid or a uh, table. So we're going to start with a table and we're going to add this in here because we know we can fill it with buttons and we can essentially uh, use that for more functionality later, which I will explain. And we know we are going to need five columns because we have five cameras and we're going to fill with buttons. So now that we have our buttons, we're going to go in and we are going to just uh, change the style of them because right now, if I toggle off, they are very obvious buttons. And what I want to try to do is make the illusion of these buttons not being here. I'm essentially making invisible buttons that just will act as regions of interest when we are clicking our NDI things. So essentially, how I envision this is the video operator will be able to press on the camera image and it will change a uh, aux cross point on the carbonite. So what we can do is go into the button, into its style, and we're going to say background color transparency 100, apply changes, and it's going to go away. And we can do that with the remainder of the button. So we're going to go background color transparency 100 apply okay cool so now as you see the background is going to be transparent and only on a hover or a press will it light up so typically on the ultra touch you aren't going to have your finger laying on this so for the most part it's going to be invisible so that's going to be great so the next thing is now getting the ndi streams into here which should be pretty straightforward so we'll do a simple grid on top of this. And then we will also do a five columns and hit OK. So now we can go NDI and I should be able to just click in the simple grid and it's going to fill that simple grid the whole way through. So if I go into my sources, we are now going to see all of my NDI streams. So for the first one, we'll pick cam one. And really there isn't anything else we need in here other than maybe specifying the quality. We'll try high at first and we'll see where that gets us. And we should be able to fill fit and hit okay. And then momentarily that should pop up. Perfect. So then we'll do that for the rest of them. We'll click here and we will take camera two and we will go quality high and fill fit. Now, sometimes when you do this, it will maybe take a couple seconds for that to show up again. But generally speaking, it's pretty quick. And uh, sometimes it'll take a, uh, a few seconds if you're coming in and out of panel edit mode. So we'll just keep finishing this up here. And just like that, we should have all of our sources. Now, because there's some wasted space here, what I might consider doing 
is resizing this simple grid up to the point here where it gives me a little bit of space at the bottom. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I'm going to hopefully be able to pull some tally information from these cameras as well. Uh, because the Hitachi camera systems have uh, the dashboard integration, I should be able to use the dashboard panel copy and move function between panels to just simply lay these on here. So <laughs> give me a minute. I need to uh, add my uh, cameras to dashboard. All right, so adding the cameras, we're gonna come up here, we're going to go other, believe it or not, and it's gonna be under cameras and it's gonna be asset cam. So we're gonna go asset cam, we're gonna go next, and I'm gonna put in the first IP address of my first camera and just hit finish, and it is going to populate it up here and it's gonna show it in the first slot. So before I get crazy with this, I wanna see if this is actually gonna work. So. If I go into my basic controls, I have my tally information here. So in theory, if I sideways this and go back to my custom panel, oh look, there's our favorite trains, which I'm sure you're now gonna hear on the uh, audio. Sometimes you just have to deal. All right, so if I kick left side into panel edit mode and right side into panel edit mode, Let's see if I can steal this tally. Oh no. This is going to be ugly. Okay, so it took a little bit more finagling than I uh, care to admit, but uh, what I was able to do is using the copy function from the uh, from Panel Builder, I was able to bring over essentially the whole thing, right? And then I would go through I can demonstrate this again is let me get rid of this so I made just another custom panel just to copy this over to because it gives gives you more room to work with so copying over the whole thing to this panel and then just going through and deleting everything else except for the main container that this is in so you have the main container and then you have the tally and then you can just simply resize it from here until you get it all figured out and then move it directly from here over to the other panel. And then that's gonna carry all of the information from the original panel to here. And then I just added another label. So now that this is added, what I should be able to do is just replicate this process. Or if I'm gonna get clever, I could probably just copy and paste this uh, container here across and then go in and change the slot that it's pointing to in dashboard. So that would be on the source level and then this would be just moving around. Okay, so it did take some finagling but we did get it to work. So as I go through and put my cameras on the line, they will tally correctly. And if I go to the preset row, they will also tally on preset. So essentially what we had to do just to show you, is when it was copying over the parameters for each camera, it was essentially using the same variables. So if I go into this container and go into the source, essentially everything, all the variables were just either green tally or red tally. So we had to break those apart per camera, per box, and specify that this is variable green tally one and red tally one and then essentially through the code says if red tally one is equal to zero when it retrieves that parameter from the original uh, panel then it's going to set the style of the background to be uh, this color and if it is otherwise going to be this color and then just to get it to behave the way i wanted it to on the green tally side instead of the default where this was if it was zero then it would be one and that allowed it to behave correctly. And then just simply copying and pasting this guy here over. And then of course, what we had also said was to change the slot number 
that it was looking for. And this was the slot in which we added the cameras um, over here to be slot one, two, three, four, and five. So there we go. Now we got it all put together and uh, it should just work. So I forgot about the buttons portion of this. So remember we had talked about putting buttons over top of these and uh, at some point I realized that it did not make sense to do those first because I kept clicking into the button so I deleted them. So I just re-added them in the same way that we did. Um, and the goal is when we press the button or touch the button on the Ultra Touch, it is going to change a cross point on the aux bus of the switcher. So if we go into the button now, we can go and add a task and we will have to add the Carbonite as a device here. So we'll go add Carbonite. IP address goes here. And that's fine. And we'll hit OK. And here we go. So then we'll come down here and we're going to do a set cross point. So we'll drag that in. And our vid source is going to be in one for my camera one. And our vid destination is going to be aux one. Because that's what I have going out and about to uh, the shading monitor. So in theory, if this all works and we can test this because I actually took the output of the shading monitor and ran it to our uh, open port of the bird dog. So if we toggle out of this and we press this, of course it helps if it's not already that source. So I'll switch it over here on the other screen and if I press this, it should change it to camera one. Perfect. So we are basically going to reproduce that on the following buttons and so forth. So now again, if we come out of panel mode and we test this, pressing this should be camera two, camera three, camera four, camera five, camera one. Now again, this is emulating, this window is emulating what is happening on the SDI source that is going to the shading monitor. So again, this will be changing that, which is gonna be in the rack located right above. So this is good. Everything looks correct. The tallies are working. So when the tallies are, or the camera is selected, it should be there. And if we go to the preset yet again, this is perfect. This is doing everything I hoped it would do. So at this point, the only additional thing is going to be we'll save the panel and then we will push it to the Ultra Touch. What we can do is we'll go to our Ultra Touch and under Manage Custom Panels, we can go into Custom Panels and we'll go Upload to Folder and we will grab the zip file Hermes One video panel and we'll go open, we'll go continue and we'll go okay. All right, so now we go over to the Ultra Touch and load the panel up. All right, so here it is, the moment of truth. I just pushed the panel over to the Ultra Touch. So we're gonna go ahead and load it up and if everything is good, it should just work. So we're gonna come over here and we're going to go into our custom panels and select it and open. And look at that. It's all here, it all works. And I have back on my uh, back screen there that uh, NDI studio monitor that's still emulating that output for the shader. So if I select it, it will change. Has a little bit of latency, but that might clean up once we actually look at it through the straight SDI input. But yeah, everything's working. So let's go ahead and get this bad boy racked up. So here we are, the end product racked and ready to go. I went ahead and loaded the panel a while, but as we can see, 
selecting is nice and easy. Changes everything, good to go. And the latency that we saw is gone, as I kind of imagined as we got into uh, straight baseband video territory. But uh, if I reach over here to the switcher, I can change the camera that is on the line, both program and preview, work. So there we go. We now have our own monitoring system for our five cameras with our PIX outputs so we can see our menus, most importantly. So if we come up here to one of them, we can hit our function key, which is hiding from me. There it is. And there we go. Pops up, goes away. So I know kind of a different let's build video than kind of my other ones. This one was more software driven than hardware driven, but uh, I thought it was fun. And let me know in the comments below if you liked it and we can again continue to do these kind of things. I know I did a few things a little bit differently, including the whiteboard session. Um, again, check out my other related videos. I'll put them down in the uh, description. So we're talking the CCU video, understanding the basics and um, the shader in a box video, which kind of touches on a lot of this functionality as well that we put in the other unit. And I'll also put some videos down in the description for understanding NDI and for panel building and the ultra touch and things like that. So again, thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you right here next time on Broadcast Buddy TV.